Did you want to go over your the game that you just played, or was it other games you wanted to look at? Okay. Yeah, I usually I go with games that uh, you usually lose because um, it's. Oh, that's good. The more, the merrier. Um, but yeah. That's uh that's uh that's one good thing with getting a coach. Um I can tell you that um when you uh, one of the one of the things that I, you should be doing anyways um which is very helpful for my students so it's more of a philosophy or a mentality thing is um have you ever gotten into the mindset where uh what's your what's your MMR right now? 3.8 yeah. So is that uh this is this is kind of perfect. Um so you, the the highest you were were 4k was 4k. Now you're 3.8. Do you feel like you should be higher than you are? Okay. So the 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 philosophy thing, the mentality thing is um there's usually two different mindsets that you can um, use the the main mindset that I think a lot of people have is um, I'm not the MMR I deserve to be has that have you ever ran into that where you like well I should just be 300 MMR higher than I am right now yeah yeah Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I got you. The, the thing that I was um, talking about, though, uh, was, so, if you play from a mindset of thinking that you should be, like, a few hundred MMR higher um, than you are, like, if I was, uh, the highest I ever was was 6.8k, um, and right now I'm uh, 6.2 and a half, um, but this is also with the MMR change. Uh, when they went to the badge system, they like got rid of a lot of MMR in the system. But let's assume that um, I felt like I deserved to be 6.8k, and then I go into a game. If I win it, all that is is, oh, I deserve that. I'm 6.8k anyways. This is just kind of like how it is. Um, and if I lose it, it's like, this sucks. This, the system's broken. I get these horrible teammates all the time. Um, and it's just kind of like, no matter what happens, it's never like really good. Like you never feel good about it. And you're, um, it's, it's more of like always negative at the, at the very best, it's like neutral. Um, but what I try to make my students, um, change to is being curious about the game. Um, like, uh, the, the most that you or anyone has probably improved at Dota was probably worth within the first 500 hours of playing it because you're like what is all of this i don't know anything and you're all like humble and you're like I, i'm horrible and whenever you play a game it's not like it, it's not like the the 20th game you play it's like well shit i did i lost 25 mmr it's like you don't even care about that you're just trying to like figure out what all the spells do and all of that and um in that time period you get better so much faster Part of it is it's a new thing and everything's new, so you have so many different areas to quickly improve in. Um, but I think a, another part of it is being curious about the game, because if you're curious about the game, when you win, um, it's, oh, awesome, I won. Um, and when you lose, it's like, oh, that's funny, what, what happened there? I thought we were going to win that game. What was the thing that... Why did I die here? Why didn't we push this tower? Why did, when we pushed this tower, we lost it? 
all of that different um, stuff. And it's it's just kind of like it puts your mindset into the place of being ready to learn about the game. Does that make sense? Yeah. 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 Yeah, and it's you're probably you're starting to get curious about the game and you're starting to improve, right? Yeah, it's just because that that one little thing of you're you're starting to be more curious as opposed to um like forcing it and like I'm 3. Point or I'm 4K, but the system's holding me down 200 MMR, I deserve that MMR. You're not going to learn anything when you're in that um, mindset. Um, nice. Ah, I gotcha. Yeah, you might want to think about trying to get into, like, some leagues or something then. That sounds like it'd be a lot more, um, fun for you. Yeah. Well, that's the good thing. You want to be playing against better players. Ah, I gotcha. Yeah. All right, so with the, the Gamer Sensei, I'm going to schedule our lesson for... Yeah, it's... um, I'm just going to schedule it at 4.15, because that's the soonest thing. Um, but uh, we've like already started the lesson kind of it's just the the thing has to start ticking or it'll say we didn't do a lesson um so i think you might have to accept i, I still don't know this site too well um Yeah, I think I tried to schedule it. Um, it says, it seems your student needs to finish their profile before they can schedule a lesson. Do you have your Steam account linked? I think that was... Um, okay. See, I'm learning. My, my second student on this site had that problem, and he said something about the... Um, yeah, I... I Um, so I'm, I'm gonna get into, you wanted to go over Bounty Hunter? Uh, I'm gonna download the replays while we're messing with this on the side. Uh, I, I just, I added you to my party so I can easily go to your recent games. Um, did you want to, you have two Bounty Hunter losses. One was the 11th, the other was the 9th. Do you just want to go over both of them? Okay. Um, and I'm sharing my screen over Skype, I th uh, and then you'll be able to watch me watch your replay.
Yeah, I got you. I like your build. Yeah, I got lucky when I got into Dota. Um, my friend got me into it. I had previous Dota 1 experience and League experience. Um, and then one of my buddies from another game was like... Uh, I was playing uh, some MMORPG. Um, and we kind of like hit the content wall where you don't really have much to do except for like weekly things. Um, but we were really good friends. So we played Dota. He was about 4K. So my first like two to 500 hours, I was playing Party with a 4K. And then I calibrated at 3.8, and I think a lot of that had to do with, um, yeah. Um, and I, I'll, I think I attribute a lot of it to him, um, because I was just playing against better people, and he was always flaming me for the stupid shit that I was doing, because I was, like, a 1k when I started. Um, so, with this, the, when I'm playing position, I actually have two videos, um, that I can link you from my YouTube, um, that I talk about, uh, what to think about as a position four, but I can, like, kind of break it down right now. Um, it's, your thought process should be identifying what you need to do in the game. Um, like, what is the most important thing to happen? Um, like, let yeah. 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 Well, the, the second part is, the first is you have to identify what you need to do. Um, so this game, like, if you shut down any of them, it's pretty good. But you would prefer to shut down the um, the SF or the Luna, right? Like, you don't care too much about the LC. Um, so those are the things that you need to do. And then when you figure that out, um, you try to figure out what you can actually do. Um, because if you go bottom right now, yeah, you, you need to shut down the Luna, but you're not going to do that against a Shadow Shaman and a... Or a yeah, so you you realize that um, you first figure out that you need to do it because if these guys rotate, then it opens up the opportunity to do this. And let's say these two are both mid and you can't help your mid at all, and then Elsie and Luna are equally uh, gankable. Um, realizing that you need to shut down the, the Luna will help you understand that that's where you want to go when you can go there. Um, and then the second step step of that again is figuring out what you can actually do, um, and with that in mind, you can't actually do anything to the shadow fiend here because of the creep equilibrium. Um, when I look to go mid as a position four, I only really want to do it if the creeps are like here ish. Um, when it's up here, you show up and then he's immediately under his tower. Whereas, like, if it's right here and you go on him here, you have all of this distance between um, when he's under his tower, and here you have about, like, 1 20th of that distance, right? So you, you need to shut down the SF, but you can't really. Um, it's definitely a good thought. Like, I, I agree with that, and that goes through my mind every game that there's a Shadow Fiend. If you can shut him down in the first minute or two, he's going to have a horrible game. Um, and that that will make you want to lean more towards going mid. But in this game, uh, with where the creeps line up, you can't really do all too much. Um, and then you can't do much bottom either. So when, when something like this happens, it's kind of like my thought process is, if I can shut down the LC a lot early, then... Um, these guys will be able to take care of LC completely on their own in a few minutes. Um, and then that... What was that? Yeah, it's kind of like if you shut this guy down when you can, it'll provide you the opportunity to shut this guy or this guy down later on. Like, if you just sit mid and 
try and like harass this guy when you can barely do it um yeah you might force out him to buy another salve or whatever um but then your lc is going to constantly be a problem and the luna is going to constantly be a problem whereas if you go top here you can shut down the lc completely and then later use the space that you created by keeping this hero so weak to shut down the sf more later while also having the lc shut down does that make sense so uh, with that in mind, go ahead. Yeah, it's kind of like um, the... So it's it's clear to you that the, the whole thought process... Like it, with this, with what I told you, would you be able to... Um, make the decision to go top here okay um so then with what i would be thinking is the second that i'm like right here i'm like okay the shadow fiend's lane is pushed i'm gonna go top and then you can get there in time to harass him out or her out um th like this is enough information right here to um, make me want to go top um and then of course bottom's just you're not gonna do anything down there um I do like the 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 items. Sometimes people try and go boots or like branches or some shit, and it doesn't do anything. See, this is this is decent, um, but it's like. yeah um it's just kind of like you could have came back and did this um after doing a little bit on her like if you were top right now she's dead right with frost blast and spin or yeah and she doesn't have any salve she might live with a fairy fire and a heal but she's she has to back all the way and then tp back in which means the juggernaut's going to be level three the lich is going to be level three she's going to be level one and this lane's over and you would have been able to rotate mid and do this just the same so like uh in this situation you could have shut down two heroes in the time that or you could have shut down one hero and then started to shut down the other hero in the same amount of time that like this is good this is like don't get me wrong this is um, you're having a lot of impact mid, but you could have also had a lot of impact top. Um, yeah, now it's kind of like... This is where you want to go bottom. Um, unless you see them roaming bottom, I would be walking towards bottom, which will make them have to go back bottom, and then you can TP somewhere else. Yeah. Like, it would be... I would head bottom um, in the hopes that they stay mid or something, and I'd be able to shut down the Luna. But if I see them... Like, if I'm invis right here, and I see them walking this way... Um, I wouldn't go bottom, but that would still be worth it because you gave the, um, your offlaner the information that they are going bottom for sure and that he does need to back up. Whereas, like, if it's 50-50, he, uh, they're coming bottom, he might stay in a position where he can just die to, um, a disruption and then rot and hook and, uh, loosen beam. Um, another thing that I want to point out, all of this is good. Um, I like your harassing. You're prioritizing the right targets. You're committing at the right times. Um, but you, uh, one thing that I point out with like most of my students is you're not using your quick buy. If you control shift click, you can fill this up to eight components. Okay, good. 
Um, and that that's like the, one of the things that you can easily start doing and it'll give you like a 2% higher win rate or whatever. Well, the, the, you should be doing it. What was that? Yeah, the, 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 the time that I do it is when you're running here at the start of the game, you have 40 seconds where your hero is running from here to here. And it's kind of like you're not doing anything else. Okay, good. As long as you know to do it, that's, that's all that matters. Um, I would be staying down bottom here. My thought process here would be, I'm going to, after you kill the pudge, um, it would be, I'm going to stay down here and I'm going to force the pudge to come bottom. And then they're going to have three people try laning my underlord and he's not even there. And then you go top. Um, if the pudge goes bottom and if the pudge goes top, you, um, you harass out the Luna because she's alone right now, you're, this guy's going to go shrine, and then it's going to be a 2v1, and you guys are going to be able to destroy the Luna. Um, whereas, they're not really going to be doing anything to your jug, because it's just a Pudge and a LC, um, and the Shadow Shaman is headed back to base. So for like 40 seconds, um, this guy's useless, and then this lane at best for the Pudge and LC is even, um, and then you guys can dominate bottom while mid does whatever mid does so that would be that would be how you have the strongest impact on the whole map um and then if you go top the the luna is going to be about she's going to be able to farm fine and this guy's not really going to be able to harass her out and then top you like might kill the lc but that doesn't matter too much does that all make sense You TP top um, when the pudge shows up. Well, you you know that the shadow demon is low, right? Um, yeah, I I guess the the thing with that is conceptualizing how long it takes for this guy to regen because he can tp back right now but he won't be able to run out there in time or he can run back and he won't be able to tp out in time so you have like a, a good little window where he's not going to be able to really do too much because yeah like you tp up here and he's still back in base um, that's kind of like hard to start doing correctly but it's definitely a worth the effort. Yeah. It's just like, uh, even if you get the pudge kill, wouldn't you much rather have stopped the Luna from getting like five last hits? Yeah. Yeah, and this is kind of like, your your L the LC is stronger than the Juggernaut right now. Like this guy spins and she just doesn't care. But if you made that play at the beginning of the game where you made her walk back to base, you the LC would not be stronger than the Juggernaut right now. So this is kind of like that one little thing coming back to bite you in the ass. And now you have to concern yourself with top, and mid and bottom, whereas before you'd only be concerned with mid and bottom.
Yeah, they have they have a really scary late game with the Luna Shadow Demon. And you guys don't have any stuns at all. Um So you s first picked it for your team. Um, the As a position four, I think the only two heroes that you can get away with first picking as a roamer is uh, Clockwork and Night Stalker. Um, and the reason behind that is there, there's no situation where having a Clockwork or a Night Stalker is bad, really. Um, they... The, um, a lot of position fours, if they don't have an early game impact, they just don't do anything for the rest of the game. Like, uh, Pudge is one of my favorite heroes, but if they pick something like a Marana mid, AM, bottom, and then, like, a Puck offlane or some shit, I hook them, and then they just, like, leap away. Or, even if there's only one of those heroes, it makes me limited to only going to two different lanes. And if there's two of them, I'm stuck in one lane, so it's just kind of like... If there's any of those on the enemy team, I can't play Pudge the way that I want to play Pudge. Like, I want to be able to gank everywhere. Um, but Clockwork and Night Stalker don't really have that problem. Um, some games, like a early game at the first minute, if they have that lineup, you can't really do anything with any hero, right? Like, uh, with a Puck, um, I guess you can against AM. A Puck, Marana, like, Co-op or whatever... You can't really do anything against those heroes except for, like, maybe hit them once with a uh, Shadow Walk or Fissurum or Roll Armor. But you don't really, like, actually do much to them because they can just escape. Um, but with Clockwork, if you have one of those games, you always have the choice of just getting cogs and then um, pulling back the offlane and then sapping experience there. And then it's like, all right, well, I still had a pretty good impact. Um, and then later on, you have so much damage with your battery salt, and you have so many like mini stuns and actual stuns and wave clear and all that that you can be really helpful. Um, and you don't really need any items to do what you want to do. You kind of just you want four staff and you want ags, but you don't have to have those to be a hero. Um, and then Night Stalker is really cool because those heroes that at the first minute nobody could do anything against. When this guy gets his uh, silence at nighttime, he can destroy those heroes, whereas other heroes still can't touch them. Because Quop, Marana, Puck, AM, they're all balanced around being squishy, but being able to leave whenever they want to. But when they're silenced, they're just squishy, and then they're also slowed. So these two heroes are my go to first picks. Um, more so Clockwork than Night Stalker, just because I think Clockwork's a little bit better right now. As the first pick, at least. Uh, yeah. And then, like, let's say you get the Bounty Hunter, but they get a Spirit Breaker. You're going to have a really hard game, right? He's just going to charge you whenever you show up, and he's going to have Dust, and you're just going to die. Um, or if later game you run through a Sentry, you're dead every time, almost. Um, but, like, there, there isn't anything like that that happens to a Night Stalker or a Clockwork. There's no, like... Oh, well, shit, they picked an Omni Knight. Like, th that kind of sucks as a clockwork, but that kind of sucks as everyone. Like, I can go on somebody and this guy repels it, but... I mean, they, the same is true for Pudge, uh, Night Stalker. Yeah, you, you still have your hook shot. Yeah. So it's kind of like they're... Not anything that I know of, um, and I have... Uh, like, I've played a lot of clockwork games... And um, before that, I had a lot of Night Stalker games. I played him, um, I think I was first picking him back before they did the the um, night vision change, where they like made him blind, essentially. Um, I was spamming Night Stalker. Uh, I don't know how long ago that was. But um, what was I saying with that? Uh, yeah, I've never felt like I'm out of place with those heroes. Whereas if I pick a Pudge or a Marana, or um, Kunkka, or some shit like that, 
and they have like solutions to those heroes it's just kind of like well shit i can't do anything like if i'm a marana and they have a puck he's just gonna phase shift it every time or um some shit like that and you just can't do all that you need to so it's kind of like um clockwork and night stalker almost always meet their full potential whereas the other heroes very often won't be able to and if you're first picking those heroes it's even less likely um because they're like oh it's a pudge if i just pick puck i don't really care about their roamer and then they have a really nice game um and bounty hunter kind of falls into that a little bit but he's not too bad um Gotcha. Yeah. Yeah. Uh... Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It gives you double damage. Yeah, this is fine. Um, another thing that I, uh, as a position four, I usually look at around seven or eight minutes if I'm going to be able to hit level six with the tome. And if not, I kind of start to prioritize and getting experience more. Um, so you can hit that timing. You TP to the shrine. Yeah. Well, this is, like, if these two minutes you'd be able to do stuff if you didn't make the earlier mistakes, because you'd be stronger and they'd be weaker. You'd probably have your level six. Yeah, and then you only need a jug top, um, and jug alone can deal with LC, so maybe they send a shadow demon up there too, and then all of a sudden, they only have three heroes on this side of the map, you have four, and you have track and all that, so it's really um, a lot easier for you to do the plays that you want to do when you had a better early game. Yeah, that wasn't the lich ult was kind of weird, um, and if it bounced onto the shadow fiend, it would have been fine for you to go in, but it didn't. So it's kind of like just a weird, um, lull. Feels bad. Maybe yeah. Uh, um. Yeah, if I don't see anything in the next few minutes, I'm going to jump to the other replay. Because, like, we've already identified a lot of things that... It... Uh, I think that's... Uh, you, nothing's going to really happen. Um, that was that one, I think. Okay. Yeah.
Yeah, and it's kind of like you only have one way to deal with either of these heroes. Because um, you need a like instant disable to deal with them. Um, and Rubik's really good for that, but he's only one hero. Um, so if you had a Night Stalker or a Clockwork, you'd be able to deal with it a little bit better. Yeah. Um, one thing that you want to be doing is you want to be checking all of their inventories. Because if it it's really important as a bounty hunter specifically, because like if they have a dust right here, you're dead. You pop out of this, um, and then like he dusts you and runs you down with rot, and then you get pounced and you die. Um, you shouldn't be being afraid of this pudge. What? Oh, the inventory? Yeah, um, you shouldn't be afraid of this pudge here. I'd be man-fighting him. Um. You should. Hopefully you do. This is why we go with replays instead of live games. Oh, um. No. Um, I guess you're trying to place your ward. But it's, uh, Pudge, if you look at his ability and his stats and all that, he has one armor. Yeah. And his rot isn't actually a trading ability. He takes as much damage as you do. So. And then, like, this is, this is good because the, the creep wave is so pushed out. And see how, see how different it's going? Yeah. Yeah. And that's literally just, you went there when the creep wave was pushed out. And that's the only difference, really. Um, one easy thing that, uh, it's really good for checking sentries, is if you run here, yeah, you can do it while in viz. And then here it's kind of, yeah, you're getting your level 2, I guess that's fine. Well, you were, uh, you were only like one creep away after killing the storm, so it's fine for you to just sap one to get the, the, um... Well, it, it's, uh, oh, well, uh, what you did was fine, the only time that I'd really sap is if I'm close to a level, um, like one creep away from a level. And you're using your quick buy. You there's no reason to not have it full though. Um, you can have up to eight things in it, and like uh, if you have your uh, if you queue up the magic wand instead of the stick and you like die, um, you can spend all of your unreliable gold on like branches and mangoes and shit. So it's kind of like they're essentially free if you die enough. Um, Yeah, that, that stuff adds up. Like, I looked at one game where, um, I think, I, I didn't buy out my items as a carry Slark, um, when I died, and it ended up costing me around 4,000 gold at 40 minutes, because of, um, because I would die, and then I wouldn't have an item, um, and then that item would have saved me, and I would have died again and not buy out. So it's like a lot of things. A hundred gold in the early game can compound to a thousand gold in the later game. If that hundred gold means you get a win lace, which means you kill somebody and get away, which all of a sudden is six hundred gold from your one hundred gold, and now it's seven hundred gold, etc., etc. Ah, uh, yeah.
Yeah. Yep. Yep. Yeah, it's just kind of like, what else are you going to do in the next 20 seconds? Yeah, you realize, but you you go to mid. Um, you you figured it out. It's just kind of like thirty seconds late, which is not a big deal. That's just kind of like how Dota happens. Feels bad. Ah, uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's fine. Well, it's kind of like you were being too aggressive with it. Um, like, you could have just waited until the Pudge was not there. Um, do you ha Okay, you have the auto-clicker on. That's good. The auto-click... The... This... Where is it? There's a setting... Um, this one. Do you have this on? Oh, you should. That thing's really good. Um, because I, I would definitely turn on the, um, yeah, cause it's kind of like, especially if you're playing bounty hunter a lot, um, if you have it on and the enemy doesn't have it on, they have like a 5% chance of getting the bounty rune, um, over you. Yeah. And then the opposite is true, where if they have it and you don't have it, you have like a 5% chance of getting it. Um, and then it makes last hitting really easy, because you know the shit where you just right click and then press stop over and over and over? So you're halfway through your animation. Um, yeah, you only have to spam one now. Um, yeah, and then the, the other reason that I really like it is uh, if you're blocking mid, all you have to do is... It's basically the same thing where... In yeah. 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 It, it makes you... It's a lot easier to focus on it, and then you just kind of like... If you're like right here blocking the creeps, you have your mouse up here, and then you're spamming the stop key. Yeah, that's good. Nice. It's good. No, it's fine. If you're showing and then leaving, it's good. Because then you give everyone the... Yeah. But if you attacked him and then stayed, it would have been wrong. Um, and then this is good. Uh, one sec. Okay, you get Urn. Never mind. Urn's really good. Yeah. Yeah. That's also, um, I sometimes get tranquils on Bounty Hunter and then let Urn solve most of my mana problems. Um, and then you're running around quick as shit and then you can get, um, you can go tranquils, um, tranquils, Urn, um, and then Windlace to eventually build into the Spirit Vessel. And that's around 2,000 gold altogether with the Urn, the Windlace, and the Tranquils. But it's, it's, you're so quick. You have, um, you have Mana Regen, you have Heals, you have the Passive Heal from Tranquils. It's, it's very efficient. And then if you compare that to 
mana boots, it's kind of like... Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's, uh, I think you still kind of want one more region item, so you might want to get, like, a win late, or, uh, um, yeah, clarities too. You can definitely just solve it with those, because they're so cheap, and you're running around a lot, so you're not going to have them break. Well, this again is... Yeah, it's just kind of like... This is again, you didn't play out the first five minutes correctly, so the the rest of the game is going to be a lot harder. Um, like, uh, I also would have liked you to have paid a little bit more attention to the Nature's Prophet. Because you can easily go over here, like, steal a big creep, check if he's low, um, like, kill his treants and stuff, and that's just kind of like, if you have nothing else to do, why not? Um, he's a... Yeah. Yeah. He was off lane and he was jungling a lot, um, because he was getting zoned out. Well, the, what that, what will fix that is looking, remembering what I started the lesson with, where you look at what you need to do and then what you actually can do. Um, there's no way to do that without considering their entire lineup and your entire lineup. Um, so there's, when you start doing that, it's never going to be like, oh shit, they have a nature's profit. Because you, you will have already considered that at the very start of the game. Um. And then the, the other part of what you um, what you need to do and then what you can do, there's a final part to it, and it's what are the lanes going to look like if you do or you don't show up there. Um, like, um, let's say it's a quap against, like, a DK mid. Um, like, the quap's going to shit on him with or without you. So with considering what the lane's going to look like with you there and without you there it's like then you'll start to consider okay i'm just gonna go mid if i don't have anything else to do and i want to get a free kill on a hero um whereas uh other lanes like you just being there can completely shift how the lane goes and you might want to like stay there the whole game and all that um but if you don't consider what the lanes look like with and without you then it's harder to um figure out exactly where to go. Yeah. Well, it's easier when you, like, have the structure laid out to, like, what your thought process should be. Ah, no, you're supposed to take his creep. And I would not be doing this without my invis up. Well, the the thing is with this play, it's kind of like, it is what it is. But I wouldn't be doing this knowing that somebody just TP'd here without my invis close to being up. Because if you waited like three more seconds, you would have had your invis here. Um, which, it doesn't seem to matter, hopefully. But it's still... Yeah. Um, I would have liked that ward right here. Because it shows into the camp, it shows this area better, and it shows this. So, when this guy jungles, you'll be able to see all of it better.
Yeah, this one kind of does it better. Um, yep. Yeah, your six should be a priority right now. Like, you can't kill him anymore, because if he has mana, he's just going to zip away. And you, your mid's already won. Your Arc Warden is... Yeah, the Arc Warden's five levels over the Storm Spirit, so you don't really have to worry about the Storm anymore. Yeah. I think the build this game would have been Tranquil's Urn Orchid. Because that would solve all of your mana problems. The Pudge would die to his rot. The Prophet wouldn't be able to uh, teleport out. The Storm would be dead when you catch him, and the Slark would be dead when you catch him. Uh, it's plus and minus. Um, next to, it's, uh, to the right of zero, and the left of backspace. I don't know if I have it changed or something, but I think that's the default. And then F9 pauses it, too. You should have uh, attacked him, tracked him, and then when the creep is low enough, hit the creep with the shuriken. So it bounces off the creep and hits him. Cause... And then he'd be, he wouldn't have healed as much, he would have been lower, he wouldn't have got the last hit. Yeah. But you uh would you agree that orchid is the right thing to pick up here? Okay. Would you be able to make that decision on your own after this lesson if this game like happened again? Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, if you went the Tranquil's Urn build, you would have been a lot more mobile, it would have been a lot less gold. Um, yeah, or if you have to, like, double Sage's Mask or whatever you have to do. Um, and the reason that it's good this game is because they have so many things that are shit on by it, um, and you guys have so little disables. But, like, a Silence on a Storm is basically as good as a stun. Um, and it's the same with the Slark. If he doesn't have... Um, if you get your silence on him before dark pack, it's as good as a stun. Um, so it's, it's mostly just their lineup and then your lack of disables makes me want to get an orchid on the bounty hunter. Um, I would, this is fine because you're killing him so quickly, but I usually like to hold the shuriken. 
Um, just in case like something happens and he TPs out, you can always break it with your shuriken. Yeah, if, if your thought process is he's going to die before he can TP out, then that's fine. You should earn him, or you should shuriken the, the prophet here. And then I'm pretty sure you live. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, the, the way that this would have worked out is if you earn him right here, and then you track him, which is fine. Yeah. 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 I mean, it ends up being a good play, but still, it could have been... You could have got another track on the Abaddon. Um, small thing, you should have your TP in your inventory, because the chances of you needing to all of a sudden use your Orb of Venom, as opposed to your TP, like, if you have to TP bottom or something, um, like a Slark showing up or something. I think you were just kind of like too slow with your shadow walk. Like what you're doing is fine, but you have to realize that the play is to get your shit off and immediately get out. Yeah. Yeah. That's just kind of like a, that's a transition that happens where early game it's good, but later game it's like, yeah, you tickled them and you died. Good job. I was about to say you should wait like half a second. Yeah, it's the the only way that I knew. It's just kind of like a feel thing. Like, I guess it's kind of like hearing it. And then like, I've played against Lark enough that I can pretty much predict when his next Dark Pact is going to be. Um, but that's like, it's just kind of like something that you have to figure it out on your own, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, if you if you waited like a half second and you used your urn, he would have died there. For sure. Ah. Uh. Oh, gotcha. Um Yeah, you just guys, you guys don't have any disables, so there's nothing to stop them except for the Rubik. Yeah. Yeah, at this point the game's pretty much over. Um, do you have any questions about either of the games? 
do you have any questions about either of the games? Like, do you have any questions about Bounty Hunter build, when to go what, or what's my opinion on what talents or whatever? Um, it depends on the game. If you guys are really far ahead, the movement speed's good because it'll keep you ahead. If you guys are really far behind, the experience gain will let you catch up for your higher tracks. Yeah. And it's, it's kind of like if you're ahead in the game, it's not that you're going to be getting a lot more experience, it's that the enemies are going to be a lot lower level, so, um you're relatively a lot stronger but not actually a lot stronger so the movement speed will help you keep them down more which will keep you relatively stronger longer than the experience gain will um i mean this game your movement speed isn't going to save your life if you get caught out the Slark's going to pounce on you, the Prophet's going to uh, tree you, the Storm Spirit's going to zip on you, the Pudger's going to hit you with a hook. You're not saved by movement speed. So if you guys were ahead this game, the movement speed would have been good, but with you guys being behind, I like your experience gain talent. And then the 25, the other ones are kind of obvious. Um, you want to go the toss damage unless you guys are super far ahead. And you have like a desolator or some shit. Um, you. Yeah. Lol. Um, get a butterfly and throw it in there. Um, but yeah, and then the track gold, it's kind of like if they don't have a lot of right clickers or, um, if you're not very important. Like if they go on you and it's like, big whoop, I already tracked your whole team. Good job, you blew your sheep on me. Then the track gold's a lot better. Um, but if you guys are already like. Getting six slotted and all that, you don't need the gold too much. Um, you have like very important items like a sheep stick and uh, orchid, and you want to make sure you get those off, and you're only dying to right clicks. Then the evasion can be good. Um, and it's also, yeah, it's 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 what it's the situation that I said, and then also not having anyone that would make the enemy team build a mkb because if you have like a pa and you get that talent even if it's like a really good game to get the talent it's still gonna be shit because they're just gonna have an mkb yeah 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 hey okay, so uh yeah i'll i'll find those two videos that I've been sending those to a lot of people because it's kind of like, um, it's me getting, it's an hour and like 50 minutes of me talking about what to think about as a position for, um, and I talk pretty slow when I'm coaching because I'm like thinking while I'm talking, so you can easily two times speed through it. Um, but yeah, any other questions while I look for this? Um, eh, uh, I don't think he's too great. Um, well, it's, it's kind of like, his creeps attack, because why? Oh. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, and then it's also... He's a very polarizing hero, which means... Um, like, a, if you think Huskar, Meepo, um, Storm Spirit, those are heroes that are very good if they're unchecked, 
but they're shit if you have the right lineup, right? Like, if, if, um, somebody picks a Huskar first pick, and then you just get, like, an AA, and then, like, a Bane or some shit, you just kind of lose the game. Um, or, like, a Meepo, if you get, like, uh, the enemy team has, like, a Void or a, uh, Ember Spirit, like, the game gets a lot harder. Um, and, like, with Huskar, you can just get a fucking Spirit Vessel also. Um, but... Why? Yeah. Ah, uh, gotcha. Yeah. Yeah. I think the whole... Um, the main thing is Urn itself is just too strong right now. Um, like, if we look at the gold cost and the mana regen you get from it, and then we look at the gold cost and the mana regen you get from Voidstone, for 25 more gold, you get two all stats, two armor, and all of the active of Urn. And Urn is a 9,000 or 900 gold item that can cancel blink daggers on core heroes. So you just get an Urn, you throw it on an axe at the start of the fight, and that hero is completely countered. So... Urn is kind of like in a weird spot where it's way too fucking strong, um, and it solves all of your mana problems because it doubles your mana region. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it, it was good last patch, and then they made it so the mana region scales, and then they also made it so something builds out of it, and that something uses a win lace, so you can, you, it solves all your mana problems, you can get an early win lace, and then if you need to later, you can counter a lot of heroes with this like spirit vessel because some games i'd go like 60 minutes in as a pudge and i'd be like i still want to keep this urn because i can cancel blinks with it but now i got a fucking spirit vessel that makes me quick and does a bunch of damage and makes this so they can't heal so it's like urn is you need an urn on every single team i would say yeah yeah Yeah, it's 30. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, of course. All the other ones suck. Like, I have, I've seen this, like, once or twice. This is, a, like, literally a meme. Um, Kaya is really strong on some heroes, though. Yeah. Well, Storm, Zeus, Lashrek, um... Skyrath. Tinker. Oh, you can get both. Well, I, I played, uh, the last game I played was with this guy. He's one of my buddies. Um, like, Kai is just way too good. Um, like it's it's a it's basically a pseudo bloodstone of sorts um, that also increases your damage because it's like it's a farming item. You do ten percent more damage and it costs ten percent less, so it makes your spells I think like twenty one percent more effective combined, um, and it it makes it so sometimes you use like um, one of your nukes can clear a wave longer or like if you're a Zeus two can clear it instead of three. So it's, like, really good for that. Um, and then, like, he even kept it at 50 minutes in the game because it's just... It's so much damage. Uh, especially from somebody that's all magic damage. Um, so I, I think it's really strong, and it's just going to get better because they're going to, like, probably make it build into something eventually because it's kind of weird where they have... Um, they have all three of these items, and these two go together, and they build into other things, and then the the intelligence equivalent doesn't build into anything, which is kind of weird. I'm assuming eventually they're going to combine all three. Um, but yeah, so any final questions? Yeah. Um, 
Here, I'll send you something that's very helpful. That link right there, um, it sh it's a it's the Dota buff matchup link, and it will show you. Um, yeah, this is an easy way to figure out all of the counters for heroes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's saying that Sniper is better against OD. Yeah, it's confusing. Like, everyone mixes it up, and I always have to, like, double-check it. The The thing that's confusing is it says that Sniper has a 4% advantage, and then OD has a higher win rate against Sniper than Sniper's natural win rate. But what that is, is OD has a higher win rate in general. He has, like, a 52.5% win rate, but Sniper drops it down to a 50%. So then if you click the Advantage button and you flip it, it shows you the counters which are Morphling, Nature's Prophet, Lone Druid, Slark, Storm Spirit, Alchemist, Io. Well, it's that's the thing that I like about it. It's literally just stats, so it's hard to argue. And... Um... I mean, it's it's literally stats, so unless it's like, there's some things that are easy to like explain away, like, um, uh, let's say one hero is really good against another, but it's just, um, like if I know a matchup 100%, and I know that, like, let's say Clockwork, uh, I'll find, see if I can find one for Clockwork, um, it could just be something like people... There's a simple thing that you change in your gameplay and it makes you really good against one hero or another. Um, like, uh, if we go to... Uh, Clockwork, and then we see Huskar is one of the best heroes against Clockwork, um, then I'm like, eh, because I can just build a Spirit Vessel. And a sp Spirit Vessel is really good on Clockwork. So it's like, um, if people aren't going... Like, I would go Tranquil's... Uh, spirit Vessel, and I would win most of the games against Huskar. Um, and all... Yeah, exactly. So, if I know something for sure, or I can reason it out, I'm not 100% set on it, but it is still stats. So, it's kind of like, it's still helpful. And, um, like, if I was trying to think of Clockwork's worst matchup, I wouldn't be like, yeah, it's Broodmother. But, like, looking at it, it's like, yeah, it makes sense that Broodmother would do a good against Clockwork until Clockwork has a lot of points in his flare. Um, so it's like, it'll... I don't naturally go to all of the top ten counters to Clockwork, but I can go to a site like this, uh, and it will make me um, see things that I wouldn't, which, like, I use this for drafting a lot. Yeah. Life stealer. Um It depends on the matchup. Um, I mean, it's, it's kind of, like, weird, um, because there's, there's, like, a lot of counterplay where the Life Stealer doesn't really care about Arcane Orb, but then Astral and Prison can save people, but you can, um, 
you can go on like different it's 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 uh i don't think od destroys a life stealer i think life stealer has a slight advantage um depending on the matchup Ah, gotcha, yeah. If you have the lockdown for the OD, he melts to a life stealer. Yeah. Alright, so I'm gonna cut the recording here. I'll